Believe it or not, today started out as a completely different vlog, but I decided to create this video because I needed to see this message myself. As a self-proclaimed narcissist who loves rewatching her own content, the best way for messages that are important to actually be absorbed by me is for me to actually include them in my own content so that when I rewatch them, they actually sink in. I'm basically improving my life one vlog at a time. It's no secret that I love working from home because I get to structure my day the way that I want to, take breaks whenever I want to, and most importantly, I get to spend all day with my dog. Gus is the best coworker ever. How could you ask for anything more? He just makes my day so much better. However, that additional freedom requires me to be extremely disciplined so that I stay productive, avoid distractions, and actually get shit done. After working remotely for almost two years, I definitely learned what to do and also what not to do when it comes to creating an environment that is conducive to actually getting things done and being productive. In this vlog, I'm gonna be sharing a few tips and also reminding myself because I sometimes forget of a few ways to stay productive, be motivated, focused, and also avoid burnout as you're working from home. My first tip is to create a dedicated space where you can actually get work done, whether that is a closet or it is just a section of your apartment where you mentally get into the state of mind to actually get work done. This is so critical and it is something that I took for granted when I first started working from home. When I first started working from home at the beginning of the pandemic, I thought this would only be a temporary working arrangement, so I didn't invest in a legitimate working from home setup until weeks later. Even then, it took me a few fails before I found the perfect working from home setup. I went from working on my bed, to working on my couch, to working in my kitchen, to purchasing a leaning ladder type of desk setup, to having a secretary desk setup, to my eventual home office clothes situation where I converted my walk-in closet into a home office. Having a dedicated working space really allows me to get into a working productive mindset so that I'm focused and I don't get easily distracted. I'll link everything featured in this episode and we'll do an updated home office tour once my office is finished. My next tip for success when working from home is to get dressed up so that I feel confident and I look good, which makes me more productive because I'm mentally preparing myself to get things done later in the day versus staying in my pajamas all day and never feeling like I'm fully awake. I'll admit, I'm not the best at staying consistent with this one, but filming every day for Vlogmas has helped motivate me to get ready most mornings. My issue is that I usually roll out of bed and immediately start working. Then hours later, I'm still in my pajamas and wonder why my day isn't going well. What I've found to be helpful is to spend a little more time on making myself presentable, especially when I have something to look forward to later in the day. For example, if I have a workout class later in the day, I'll put on a cute Pilates outfit so that it's easy for me to actually make it to class later in the day because I'm already mentally in a working out headspace. If I have a work or business meeting, I'll wear something comfortable but still professional looking on top so that I'm not rushing at the last minute to make myself presentable on camera. I've linked some of my favorite working from home outfits, including these amazing comfortable joggers that you're seeing in the description for this video. It is essential that you take necessary breaks so that you avoid burning out. That break might look like going to the spa or taking a power nap. My theme for 2023 is finding more joy in my life and the thing that brings me so much joy is creating content. Whenever I get the opportunity to get out of the house or even if I'm just at home documenting my life, that brings me so much joy. So something like that can instantly improve my day even if I've had a really tough day at work. When you are working at home, there is not going to be anyone coming around reminding you to take breaks for yourself and to eat dinner. I still struggle to make time to eat. I find all these other excuses. I say I'm too busy, but having Saqqara has been really great for me because I have the food waiting for me and there's very little that I need to do. So the friction involved with me saying that I have no time to make food is is no longer there. I shared a few tips for staying motivated to keep up with your fitness and wellness over the holidays in an earlier episode, so be sure to check that out. Because my time is extremely limited and as I'm multi-passionate, I want to do all of the things, 
I started stacking activities as much as possible to literally kill five birds with one stone. I usually listen to personal development or entrepreneurship related podcasts in the background as I'm working, running errands, or cooking. Late at night, when I'm doing tasks that don't really require that much brain power, I'll even put on some Netflix or some reality TV so that I don't feel like I'm missing out on all of my shows like Below to I organize my entire life and try to stick to my schedule that is in my google calendar i monitor my cycle and try to plan my activities around it to the extent possible i covered this in an earlier episode i track my cycle and i put it all in my google calendar so that i am aware of the best times of the month to perform certain activities because i don't have a personal assistant i had to find ways to keep myself on top of all of the things that i have going on in my life i set up daily digest emails through google calendar and that helps remind me of all of the things that I definitely would have forgotten about. I also block out three hours on Friday evening, Saturday, and Sunday to focus on tasks for my business and content creation. I also use Calendly to handle scheduling appointments and meetings. My go-to tool for project management is ClickUp. Without ClickUp or Google Calendar, I don't know how I would survive because I use both of those tools religiously to keep my life organized. I store all of my content ideas, content calendar in ClickUp, and I also use it to organize my YouTube video workflows. And I can and will do an entire tutorial on how I use ClickUp to organize my life. I use the mind maps to map out the goals that I have for the upcoming year, but I'll save that for season two. Thank you for hanging out with me today in my what i spend in a week episode that i aired a few days ago i mentioned that there were a number of expenses that i spend for my business related to project management scheduling planning various tools i also have a number of recurring business expenses but i'm only going to be providing you with a very high level summary of these expenses because i'm going to be going through all of these expenses in greater detail in a future vlog just because there's so much to unpack with this so in tomorrow's vlog i'm going to be picking up where i left off and i'm going to be sharing my top tools for everything from project management scheduling planning running my membership communities, hosting my website, and I'm gonna share exactly how much I spent on all of these different tools each month. So that if you are a solopreneur, you are thinking about starting a side hustle, or you just wanna get your life together and be more organized, I'm gonna share all of the top tools that you need in your life so that you don't have to do the research. I've done it for you, so you're welcome in advance. I've already put together a list of all of these tools and you can find the freebie linked in the video description. And until then, you know what to do. Go binge all of my shorts. I posted some new ones, but also binge all the rest of the episodes of Vlogmas and I will see you guys later.